Hey everybody, we're here. We're here today for kind of like an emergency situation. Do 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 do. I'm gonna wait for people to join. Um, I'm here to make some trouble. I'm here to make some trouble today. Um, I think this is a very important. Can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm mic'd up because this is an, this is an official broadcast. Welcome to the part of the program where I tell you everything that has displeased me over the platform in the last 24 hours. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. I'm here today to debunk, show you the evidence I have tested. Um, I have years of experience working with acrylic paint and mediums. Why you absolutely should not use baking soda mixed in your paint. I could not find this information with Google. I could not find this information. I thought for sure that the idea seemed so crazy to me that this had been, you know, debunked or proven wrong or whatever. Um, so I'm here today to explain to you how acrylic paint works and why this is a really bad idea. Uh, let's begin. Great to see you guys. So I work um, with, uh, oh, hold on, erase that. I, I am a sole proprietor. This is a non-sponsored post. I'm not connected with Arm & Hammer baking soda, although I do use it in baked goods. I do have a strong relationship with cookies and I am not affiliated with Golden Paint. Uh, I use Golden Paint because I've been using it for years and I think it's a superior product and I love it very much. However, here we go. So I came across yesterday, I'm recovering from a little surgery that I had on my back. So I spent way too much time on the internet stewing and becoming angry about this. And I saw a gazillion of you, including some of my students, which is surprising, um, enjoying commenting and sharing in the delight of the new trend that's sweeping the airwaves of mixing baking soda into acrylic paint to create texture. This is why this is a bad idea. Um, Paint is created with pigment and binders, and each manufacturer of paint has spent time testing and developing their specific proprietary blend um, that makes the acrylic paint stable, um, prevents cracking, chipping, flaking, archival, uh, fading. All of those considerations are placed into acrylic paint when these formulas are developed. So you have a formula of acrylic paint. Take, take this blue for example. And here we are dumping a lot of psycho, uh, what is this? Um, sodium bicarbonate into the formula that's already been tested, authorized, mixed, uh, light fast tested and all this stuff. And we're expecting the paint to retain the same benefits that it has as it came from the manufacturer. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. People, from what I gathered, the and if you have questions, please use the question mark button at the bottom so that I can find you when I'm done with my rant here. From what I understand, the main reason, actually, I don't even know the reason. Probably the main reason is because people get paid for real views and they're putting something that people think is in, in, you know, innovative and whatever online and they're making money from the views on these things and your engagement. Uh, this is dirt cheap. Acrylic paint costs a little bit more. Um, so I feel like people are looking for an easy extending extender type of product to make texture in their paint. If budget is your concern for paint, that's the primary reason why you should not be doing this. I mixed baking soda into my paint last night and I used anthraquinone blue. And my first um, impression when I started mixing the, the baking soda into the paint was, wow, as soon as the baking soda entered the paint, it became very solid. It was very difficult for me to maintain the viscosity of the paint. I couldn't move it around. It was actually kind of like clumping up. So I had to add a lot more paint. So I'm already using excellent professional grade paints. So a little of this goes a long way. So here I am mixing my paint with the baking soda and I have to use a lot more of it in the first place. That's problem number one. So the money you're saving on the baking soda is erasing any value that you had in your paint when you started. 
Number two, this is baking soda here and this is baking soda here. For sake of testing and so that I had a control group, I also used the same color paint with um, um, two of my favorite mediums to work with. This is called fiber paste and this is called pastel ground. And I have these linked on my website, but both of those acrylic mediums produce a similar texture to that of the baking soda. So over here on the baking soda, you can see, oh, I, from what I understand, I, if you don't know, I also have a, a degrees in gemology. Um, you can see a small, like crystalline, um, I imagine it's the sodium um, that's, it creates a little bit of a kind of a shimmer here. But what I notice when I rub this, this, these are dry, I painted these last night. What I notice when I rub this first off is that the texture feels there's something there. I can't see it, but there is some sort of residue when I look at this paint. I do not feel the same when I touch the actual acrylic mediums. And they both have been on here the same amount of time. The second most important test was the moisture test. So when you're working with acrylic paint, you're dealing with like wet media. I placed small droplets of water on all of these and I let them set for a couple seconds to simulate additional layers of acrylic paint or anything wet that would touch this, such as varnish. Um, another, you know, I saw on this popular reel that people were saying, oh, well, if this is unstable, you can just varnish it. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. So what happened when the water pooled here is that when I went to pick it up, the paint, it reactivated the paint. So what I gather is, is the amount of, this is kind of like Mrs. Wizard, the amount of sodium bicarbonate that was added, baking soda, to the paint mixture did in fact negatively impact the binder of this paint, causing it not to be binding. So the paint reactivates. Okay, so you say, you know, what's the big deal, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Here's the big deal. When I went to paint, because I mean, are you only going to paint one layer of this on your paint and call it a day? No, you're going to paint other things on top of it. Here's another situation. This is, uh, let me get my facts straight here. This is a fiber paste sample up here. This is the baking soda sample. This is the same amount of white paint placed onto both dry, complete samples. And look what's happened. The baking soda sample completely bled into the white. Look at how bright and pure this is. Bright and pure, no bleed, er, flat, dull, bleeding paint. So it's not good, you guys. Um, there's another reason, hold on one moment. I'm very excited about this topic. I hope you're putting your questions in. So people are saying, um, some of the other, another um, issue that I noticed when I was testing this is because I had to do it a couple times because I wanted to make sure, I mean, I gave the, against my better judgment, I gave this, you know, technique, it's not a technique, it's, it's garbage, the benefit of the doubt. The more times I put water on here, the more baking soda that came off of the panel. This is, you know, one of the solutions that this video, um, you know, stated was, you know, if you want to ensure that this is stable and safe and whatever, use a rigid panel. Got you. I got my rigid panel right here. It's coming off with water, you guys. Come on. This negatively affects the binder in your paint because it's altering the chemical composition of your paint in the first place. It's rendering the binder like junk. Um, Another thing that I noticed, oh, so people, people think, well, I could use varnish and the varnish is going to hold everything up. V varnish is not like, you know, um, texture. Uh, it's not like cement. It's not like a clear cement that you can place over an abstract uh, acrylic medium to hold everything in place. When acrylic paint dries, what cause, what, during the drying process, little tiny microscopic holes of the moisture that's in the acrylic paint evaporate. That makes your paint dry. So those little tiny holes are left there. And what happens is over time on an unvarnished painting, dirt and grime and dust collect in the hole in the holes. And then your paint, your painting becomes dull. Uh, you know, it's not good to sell something that's not varnished, whatever your painting becomes dull because the, the dust collects on the top. So varnish 
All it does is fill those holes to prevent the dust and grime from collecting over years of, you know, normal wear and tear on a painting. So varnish is not going to hold this together. It could still flake off. Maybe it'll like reduce it a little bit. I don't think so. Anyway, you guys, I'm Julie Pritchard. It, it, the test was really easy. I'm very discouraged to see um, this type of misinformation spreading viral. Um, you know, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. But the thing is, is that don't expect your paint to behave the same. Don't expect that you're going to be able to blend it. Don't expect that if you sell that painting, your customer is going to live for it for happily for years, because I suspect that over time, my paintings are not going to flake, but paintings with this mixed in it are. Um, save this for baking. Save this for cookies. What questions do you have on the topic? I can see a lot of you retained the, um, uh, you know, stayed on the tape. But you guys, it's not a good idea. And it really bothers me to see that type of, that's what I was going to say, that type of misinformation spreading rampant. Um, you know, we've all been disappointed by things that we see on the internet. I try to test, I try to use my experience and my knowledge as an artist over all these years um, to share good information with you for best practices. This is definitely not a best practice. I don't even know if this is fun. I, I don't even think I could put this in the fun column for you to just fun, have fun with because it's a, actually a waste of supplies if you use this mixing in your paint. Um, Crystal, what you can do is just, you know, I can't recap the issue. I just explained how I tested this like four times. Um, the issue is, is that baking soda mixed into paint is a ridiculous idea. That's the, that's the bottom line. So I'm looking for questions on the question um, button here. There are none. Um, so with that, I can, um, you know, I'll, I'll, this will be for sale. I mean, for sale. This will be for replay in my um, uh, feed for free. I'm happy to be able to share this information with you. Like I said um, yesterday, if you missed yesterday's tutorial, um, yesterday I had some stitches, I have stitches in my back, so I uh, kind of have a slow time here in the studio, but I couldn't sit and watch this go. Um, while we're here, you know, be safe, be smart with your supplies. Don't paint with your hands. It's ridiculous. That's also a dumb idea. You'll thank me when you're 80 years old and still painting because you haven't poisoned your body with acrylic chemicals and paint. Use a glove if you have to touch it with your hands. Um, but that's it, you guys. Wait a minute. There's a question here. Let's see if it's per the topic. Um, yeah, Nina is asking, can you mix non-golden paste with golden paint? For sure. Uh, you can mix any acrylic medium with any... Uh, brand of acrylic paint. So acrylics and acrylics jive together. So um, you can definitely um, mix them. If you have, you know, another brand, you can certainly do that. I just, um, I've had such great luck with this label. I use them exclusively because I always know that the product is going to hold up, you know, to, to my process and to, to um, like a superior level of performance. So that's why I'm, I'm sticking with this. Um, I spend less money on supplies because I'm not buying something over because something fails while uh, while using it. But in case you missed it at the get-go, if you're looking for a good alternative to use that's appropriate to mix with acrylic paint to create texture, use try the pastel ground, try the fiber paste. Um, there's even molding paste I put out here. Those are three mediums that can definitely provide texture for you that will be stable. It will be archival. It won't fade. It won't discolor and it won't cause you any problems in your art. So that is, that's the whole reason that we're painting. Um, I don't know, you guys, uh, you know, if, if you, if you need any more convincing, you can see the tests and read more about it and see the links to my varnishing tutorial, how I apply the varnish, the products I use, why we do it. Um, and also the tests that I performed to kind of debunk this fad that's sweeping the internet. Please share the video um, with your friends. Um, you know, people don't see these lives um, as much as you would see a 13 second reel, but this is so important. Um, I like to make sure that when I provide information here on my channel, that it's really good information, um, that it holds value, and that it's smart information. And um, that's the same type of uh, service I provide in my online workshops. So to learn more, please touch my name to see my links and you can find everything that we just talked about up there. And I'll see you guys soon. Uh, you know, 
if you have any questions, if you see a tutorial or whatever that's pertaining to acrylic medium, let me know about it. Tag me in the tutorial. I'll take a look and, you know, if it makes me upset, I'll make another video like this. See you guys. Take care.